And those would be the Blue Ridge Mountains. Hi, I'm Melanie, and you're watching Yarn Journeys. If you are new to my channel, I am so glad you found me, and I hope you enjoy today's show. And I warmly welcome those of you who are returning viewers. I'm so glad to have you here. Yarn Journeys is my knitting and fiber podcast in which I talk about my yarny discoveries and adventures, both far from home and nearby. In today's episode, I'm going to be taking you with me on my recent travels to the Blue Ridge Mountains of the Commonwealth of Virginia. Uh, but before we get into today's show, I'll like to tell you a little bit more about the Blue Ridge Mountains. So the, the Blue Ridge Mountains, as I understand them, are part of the Appalachian Mountain Range from Virginia all the way down to Tennessee. And, and by the way, I, I grew up saying Appalachian, but I have since come to understand that the pronunciation is actually Appalachian. Like, I'm going to throw an Appalachia. So I'm going to try and stick to that. Um, so the Blue Ridge Parkway goes from the bottom of Skyline Drive at the bottom of the Shenandoah National Park all the way to Great Smoky Mountains National Park in mostly in Tennessee, but there's a bit of it that's also in North Carolina. But now let's get into the heart of the show. House Mountain Yarn is a wonderful knitting store in Lexington, Virginia. Lexington, Virginia is a cute little college town. Um, Lexington's the home of Washington and Lee University, as well as the MI, the Virginia Military Institute. So it's got that college town, craftsy, fun feel um, with lots of shops and restaurants. And of course, when I saw the sign, to come in and pet the yarn, you bet I went right in and ju did just that. Uh, Ellie, the owner of House Mountain Yarn, uh, happened to be inside and uh, she took me on a great tour of everything they had there. Um, inside House Mountain Yarn, they have fabulous selection of yarn. Um, and with lots of samples so you can see how all that great yarn knits up. Uh, I was really pleased to uh, spot a sample of The Weekender by Andrea Mowry because of course that's what I am spinning for right now um, and it was nice to see what a finished product would actually might look like. They had a wonderful collection of name brand yarns like Barocco and Malabrigo and Lang yarns and, and Juniper Moon. Um, so brand names that are well known for high quality yarns and they had a lot of them and in great quantity. They also have a fantastic collection of locally made hand dyed yarns as well as some uh, yarns from the Shenandoah Fiber Mill, uh, which is known for its alpaca blend yarns. Uh, I also saw lots of yarns from Beezines and, and also Yarns Over Floyd. <laughs> I just love that name, Yarns Over Floyd. It comes from a small farm in uh, Floyd, Virginia. Uh, it was a really fun store to walk around. They have lots of great knitting knickknacks and notions and things. And 
I don't know if you can see them, but um, I purchased from House Mountain Yarns this lovely little sheet that's in the background because uh, I saw it and thought that would be such a fun thing to have. And right now it's holding uh, my little tube of spinning wheel oil, but it's great for things like crochet hooks and scissors and, and so on. Uh, one of the things that House Mountain Yarns uh, likes to do, aside from its classes and uh, meetups that they host at the shop, is that they're really into yarn bombing. Uh, in fact, the store was decorated for 4th of July when he visited and they had some yarn bomby decorations. But uh, in the window of the store, they were advertising that um, yarn bombers were sought. If you're not familiar with yarn bombing, it's when people knit up streamers and flags and things like that to drape over trees and buildings and public spaces to celebrate something or uh, draw attention to something or what have you. It's, it's a lot of fun. I myself have not participated in yarn bombing, but it looks like a heck of a lot of fun. House Mountain Yarns also participated in the Blue Ridge Yarn Crawl and the uh, Flowers and Fiber Yarn Shop. And what I got was their Flowers and Fiber Bundle. And this was actually a bundle from the Knitting Coop in Salem, their yarn, as well as House Martin's special yarn for the flowers and fiber yarn shop. So House Mountain Yarn's special yarn for that was the Beezines Beautiful HT. And once again, this is fingering wool in blue faced Lester and nylon. And I am really getting into this color blue these days. It's kind of like a, I guess you'd almost call it a periwinkle, really soft, but I think this color is also gorgeous. And Beezines is a local hand dyer in the Lexington area. This is the Knitten Coops High Twist BFL Nylon yarn in fingering in the color Speedwell. So this, the, the Knitten Coop, which is a yarn store in Salem, also uh, hand dyes and produces yarn. And these, I think, would go beautifully together, uh, perhaps in a shawl. I'm actually also thinking of maybe doing um, a Musselberg hat. Uh, that pattern's by Isolde Teague. It's, it's very popular um, and it calls for a heck of a lot of fingering wool. Now, Blue Face Lester is an increasingly popular wool type. You know, un until I started getting into spinning, I knew there was merino wool and then there was just wool. So I really didn't understand that there were different breed types. It was like wool yarn is wool yarn. Uh, but increasingly these days, uh, you, particularly with these um, smaller producers, um, they are often choosing specific breeds for their wool. And this is, both of these are made from Blue Faced Lester. Blue Faced Lester is uh, an English long wool breed, but unlike many of the long wools, uh, its wool is more fine and um, softer to the touch and it is good for garments that are meant to be worn next to the skin. But it has some of those other long wool characteristics. It's pretty darn strong, and the sheen uh, make it dye beautifully. 
Uh, and it's often used for socks now as well. So um, most of the um, sock yarn that I have been knitting with is, you know, tends to be some mix of superwash merino and nylon, but I am psyched to get to know what BFL, as Blueface Luster is commonly known as, feels like when you're knitting with it. Those yarns also came with their Twin Mountain Handcraft stitch markers, um, which I think are really cute. So I look forward to marking my increases and decreases with these little guys. The first thing you do when you get to your campsite is to put up your tent. And my husband and I have gotten so much better at putting up this tent since we got it last year. relax and knit. I often think the best part about camping is the campfire. That's Sharp Top Mountain overlooking Lake Abbott. Some of the main features of the Peaks of Otter and National Recreation Area. Falling water cascade pipe did not disappoint us with all its little waterfalls and pools and eddies. It was so beautiful. Now that's really good. That's like wow. The hike up Sharp Top Mountain was classic Appalachian mountain hiking. Lots of roots, lots of rocks, and steep. But at least it's cool and shady with tweeting birds and lots of pretty things. to the top, there was an amazing view to see, and lots of bugs. Parkway, there's lots of views to take in. Susan's Yarn Stash is a great little knitting store in Fishersville, Virginia. It's about a five minute drive from Interstate 81. Um, the store itself is in a standalone. A building near sort of a, a small a strip mall kind of place and from the from the road it does you can't see that it is a yarn store but once you follow the Google Maps directions to the parking lot you see a nice big sign that says Susan yarn stash um, the story about this uh, yarn store is that it was um, owned by a woman 
for quite a long time. And she was the one who uh, developed the store in the first place. Um, but unfortunately, uh, she recently passed away and her son inherited the store. And the son and daughter-in-law decided to keep the yarn store going and they renamed it to be Susan's Yarn Stash after the original owner. And what a stash of yarn there is inside it. Um, so, I mean, first of all, there is anything a knitter could need in there. There is a great selection of knitting needles of all kinds. Um, they had a great selection of name brand yarns that any knitter looks for uh, to make most patterns. So like Malabrigo or Barocco, um, great stuff in there, lots of colors in good quantities. Also um, some beautifully knit samples of uh, shawls. Um, in fact, they had a sample of the famous butterfly shawl that I have looked at and thought maybe I might want to knit someday. And it was really nice to be able to, to pull it out and, and really take a good look at it. The thing that makes Susan's yarn stash really stand out is its selection of locally made hand dyed yarns, such as Mama Jess yarns and Rove Yarn Company and Leah Fibers. Those three in particular um, are really only available at Susan's Yarn Stash or at um, on their Etsy shops or from their own homepage shops. And I believe they also go to um, fiber festivals that happen in the area. But it is great to know that you can go to Susan's Yarn Stash and get a one-of-a-kind fiber there. Uh, and that's what makes this store special to me. Um, also, I'd like to mention that the staff who worked there that day were so nice and lovely. We had a great chat. She gave me a tour of the place um, and I felt so nice and warmly welcomed there. So what I bought uh, was from uh, Mama Jess Knits, and it happened to be the colorway that Susan, Susan's Yarn Stash had for the Flowers and Fiber Shop event. So um, uh, I got it, uh, I, I got it seeing the skein, but then since we were on our way down to go camping, I figured maybe I should get it uh, balled up into a cake just in case that the socks I working with, I finished too early and then would be hankering for something else to knit. Um, so this is a 75% um, superwash merino and 25% nylon sock yarn in the colorway Wildflowers by Mama Jess Knits. And I think think this is going to make some really beautiful socks. Also, um, each skein for the Flowers and Fiber Festival also came with a, I don't know if you can see this, but with a special stitch marker that has, was created by Twin Mountain Handcrafts. That's also uh, a maker from the Blue Ridge area. And now it's time for some show and tell. So I don't have any finished objects since my last episode, but I am making good progress on my Kurdok cardigan. Um, this is a cable knit cardigan. The pattern is by Carol Feller. 
the famous Irish knitwear designer. And the wool is uh, Carol Feller's Blasta, which is a gorgeous, tweedy Irish spun yarn. Um, I have now completed the body. It's knit from the top down, so I made it all the way down to the ribbing. And thanks to everyone who commented on the last episode about whether I would leave the mistakes in. I did. In fact, I didn't have anybody telling me to rip it out. Even my mom said it was okay not to rip it out. So, whew, I think, it, I think it's going well. Um, so I finished the body and now I am working on the left sleeve. Uh, the construction of this continues to be so interesting to me. So the way the sleeve is made is that you pick up stitches. Um, you pick up uh, the stitches along uh, the bottom of the armhole to the top. Then you continue the pattern of the cable that was going across the shoulder. And then you start knitting the sleeve in the round from there. And I've done that on this side. But you knit the cap of the sleeve here in short rows back and forth. Now, Carol Feller is known for short rows. In fact, she's taught a whole class about short rows on Craftsy. Um, so I think it's going to make for a really nice um, uh, fitting rounded shoulder. And now I've gotten to the point uh, where I am knitting in the round and I am done two decreases so far. Now, uh, Carol in her pattern recommends using uh, Magic Loop or DPNs. Now, I must confess that I don't really like Magic Loop that much. I just find that having to pull the loop um, back and forth is a bit fussy for me. Um, and I can do DPNs just fine. That's straight DPNs are not a problem. I do find that it sometimes makes it hard to keep all the stitches in place and so forth. I like to knit, to knit uh, small circumference um, tubes with either high high flyers or the Addy version of them. And I'm trying to think of the name. Um, but anyway, uh, they look like this where you have um, two metal needles with uh, a wire in between. And there's three of them. And I, feel, I really like knitting socks um, with these kinds of needles. And um, it works pretty good for me. Um, I'm curious, are you a magic looper? Are you someone who likes to use DPNs or double pointed needles? What do you think of these Haya Haya flyers if you've tried them? Um, how do you like to knit your sleeves? Anyway, um, the one of the things that makes um, knitting uh, sleeves and using DPNs kind of a pain sometimes is that the the stitches can follow can the stitches can fall off the needles when you aren't knitting them. So I thought I would show you my fix for that. So what I do is I scrunch up the stitches onto the two needles like that. And then, then I take a third one and I poke it through both layers of fabric and then back 
through the other side, pretty close to where the needles are. And that way I have found that that kind of keeps the fabric a bit condensed and the stitches don't fall off the tips of the needle. So that's my little tip for the week. Let me know if you've tried something like this or, or what, what you've tried in the comments below. I always like to learn what other people have found to uh, work great for them. So that's my Kerdock cardigan. I am hopeful that this will be finished probably by the end of August. We'll see. So I don't have another knitting project on needles right now because I am also doing the tour de fleece, which is taking up a fair amount of time. I am what I like to call a bigamous knitter. Um, so I know that there are some people who call themselves monogamous knitters. They only knit one project at a time. I um, am a bigamous knitter. Uh, I tend to have two knitting projects going at a time. Um, one, which is a, usually a larger project uh, that I only really keep in the house, that's usually like a sweater or a big shawl or an afghan or something like that that's hard to um, tote around. And then I usually have a, a smaller project like socks or a hat that I can take with me wherever I go and it is really useful um, for like if I'm sitting somewhere for a while to have something to knit or to take with me on hikes uh, like I did with my socks. So I don't have a second knitting project going on right now, but I am trying to figure one out. So. Um, in my first episode, I showed this uh, green hand-dyed Drury DK from Townhouse Yarns. I got this at This Is Knit in uh, Dublin. And uh, you may have seen in that episode, I put... Um, some words up there to say that my mom had already called dibs on that yarn. And what she wants is a headband similar to what I knit for myself and another one that I knit for my sister. Uh, so uh, last summer, um, in preparation for a trip to Iceland, I knit myself a whole bunch of knitwear. Uh, to keep me warm in Iceland, most of which I didn't wear. But that is a story for another episode. But I made myself uh, this cable headband out of Manos del Uruguay Maximo, I believe is the yarn. Um, it's this really soft uh, merino hand-dyed singles and the color is gorgeous. And now the reason why I did, didn't wear this much is that I actually made it slightly too big. Um, I made it to fit my head exactly instead of putting negative ease in. So when I wear it, it just slides right off my head. So I learned about the importance of negative ease when knitting hats and headbands. Then I made one using this similar pattern for my sister using uh, Brody cashmere wool uh, from Valley Yarns as well as, and I held it together with um, Mano Still Uruguay Fino for this marled blue headband using the same pattern. Um, and the pattern is the not not work cabled pattern by uh, Lucy Liebenstein. Um, it's a free pattern on Ravelry and I will link it in the description below. Well, I don't know if I wanna knit that pattern for a third time. And also 
I know that it's not going to use up this whole skein of yarn. I'll probably have more than two thirds left because this headband won't use over 200 yards of this beautiful cashmere blend DK yarn. So I am considering doing something different for this headband. And here's what I'm thinking. And um, I'd love to get your reaction to what you think I should knit. So um, I am one of the last knitters on earth that haven't yet tried brioche. So I thought a good way to get into brioche would be to try it with a headband. It's something small-ish, and um, I think it would look really pretty with this hand-dyed yarn. Uh, so here are the options I'm considering. One is um, the Wrecking Headband by Allison O'Mahony. Um, it's in a, almost a, it's like in a seed looking brioche stitch. So lots of beautiful texture. And I think it would look sort of really warm and cushy and it wouldn't just be like one thin band. The other thing I'm looking at is the Snowdrop headband by Along Avec Anna. Um, and that's more of like uh, a classically looking brioche headband. What do you think? Have you made a brioche headband? Or, a, you know, have you done much brioche? Am I overlooking a pattern that you like to knit? Which of those patterns do you think might be more fun? Comment below. Um, I probably won't be starting this project for another uh, couple weeks or so. I'll probably, it'll probably get on my needles um, once the tour de fleece is over. So we've come to the end of this episode of Yarn Journeys where we focused on the yarny goodness of the Blue Ridge Mountains in Virginia. If you enjoyed the show, please do be sure to give it a like by clicking the thumbs up below um, and also do subscribe to make sure that you don't miss any upcoming episodes of Yarn Journeys. On my next episode, I intend to focus on some of the yarn shops and yarny hotspots that are around where I live in Arlington, Virginia, just outside of Washington, DC. Once again, thanks so much for watching Yarn Journeys. I look forward to seeing you soon.